chapter 7, and if you're able, would you please stand as I read from Matthew's Gospel, chapter 7, verses 15 to 20, from the New King James Version. We continue this series on Sermon on the Mount. We are nearing the end. This is part 29. <laughs> I've preached almost 30 messages from the Sermon on the Mount. I have enjoyed it immensely. Thank you, by the way, for the privilege of being able to spend my time studying and preparing sermons. I'm blessed indeed. Hear the word of the Lord, Matthew chapter 7, beginning at verse 15 from the New King James Version of the Bible. Jesus is speaking. Beware of false prophets who come to you in sheep's clothing but inwardly they are ravenous wolves. You will know them by their fruits. Do men gather grapes from thorn bushes or figs from thistles? Even so, every good tree bears good fruit, but a bad tree bears bad fruit. A good tree cannot bear bad fruit, nor can a bad tree bear good fruit. Every tree that does not bear good fruit is cut down and thrown into the fire. Therefore, by their fruits you will know them. This is the word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. Amen. You may be seated. I'm so afraid I won't remember to do this, so just pardon me um, for uh, just before I preach this sermon, I see in the congregation my good friend Robert Benson and his wife Lynn. He is the pastor of the Southwest Christian, no, Southwest Christian Fellowship Church. I think that's right. Is that right? Southwest Christian Fellowship Church at 645 Grant Street. And he is a great pastor there, a great fellowship of folks, and we have enjoyed getting to know Pastor Benson. and their service is not until 2 o'clock in the afternoon, so he's free to sometimes uh, bounce around and hear other pastors. I have gone down there at 2 o'clock in the afternoon to hear him and to fellowship with them, and it's just great to see you, my brother and sister. Now, Papa God, May we receive your word with gladness. Amen. Amen. I would like to report that there are no more false prophets. <laughs> <coughs> they are gone. After Jesus condemned them and delivered a warning, they have now disappeared from the earth. Not so. <laughs> they are still with us. It grieves my heart. I told you that I'm not a great fan of Christian television. And one of the reasons is because there are so many hucksters and ill-prepared men and women who simply have enough money to buy airtime, but they're not saying anything. And they're saying it quite loud. That is what they're not saying. Yes. And spending more time begging for money than preaching the word of God. Jesus might call them false prophets. In fact, I started to call some of them out by name as part of this sermon, and I, I decided not to do that. But this word describing false prophets, you'll know the first part of this word. In fact, you'll, you'll know both parts of this compound word. The Greek word is pseudo-prophetis, and you know pseudo, false. This word is used only 11 times in the entire Bible, and every time it is used, some words are variously translated. Every time this word is used, it means false prophet. Every time, every one of the 11 instances, it means false prophets. 
And the problem with false prophets, according to this text, and I want you to come here and look at it with me. The problem with this, with these false prophets, is that their externals and their internals don't match. Now look at it here in verse 15. Beware of false prophets who come to you. Here's the external. They come to you in sheep's clothing. Sheep's clothing suggests softness, suggests maybe submission. Sheep, gentle, soft creatures. The intern has violence attached to it. Inside, they're like ravenous wolves. I've never had a pet wolf. I've had some exotic pets. I've never had a pet wolf. But wolves are not known for licking your face and laying their head in your lap while you watch television. Wolves are vicious animals. Outside, the dressing is rather wonderful. Sheep's clothing. Inside. Violence, the consuming of others. That's the problem with these false prophets. The window dressing is beautiful. The window dressing is soft. The window dressing suggests submission and sheep-like gentleness. Inside, they are full of violence and are like wolves that tear other creatures apart. 2 Corinthians chapter 11, verses 13 to 15. Listen to it. For such are false prophets, deceitful workers, transforming themselves into apostles of Christ. And no wonder, for Satan himself transforms himself into an angel of light. Therefore, it is no great thing if his ministers also transform themselves into ministers of righteousness whose end will be according to their work. Do you hear it? Yeah. Mm -hmm. Satan himself. Sheep's clothing, inside like a ravenous wolf. So here's the question. Since these false prophets are so good at disguising themselves, we might ask the question, well, how would I know the authentic from the pseudo? That's a legitimate question. Since these false prophets dress like sheep, and you could mistake them for being one of us, how would I know a false prophet from a true prophet? I offer two answers. One directly from the text, and one from the larger context of Scripture. First, from the text. You will know the authentic from the pseudo by their fruits. That's all in verses 16 to 20. You will know them by their fruits. But pastor, we're not supposed to be judging people. No, you, you're permitted to judge. We went over chapter 7, beginning at the first verse, and it does not mean what people think it means, that we may not pass judgment on a person, that we may not call things what they are. It doesn't mean that at all. No, you, you can look at a person's fruit and you can make a determination. Now, if, if you call yourself a true prophet, you can use the language, but I'm not seeing the fruit of a prophetic life. You call yourself a believer. I, I'm not seeing any fruit of that. You say you're a Christian. I, I'm not seeing any Christian fruit hanging from the branches of your life. You'll know them by their fruit. Listen to 2 Peter chapter 2, verse 1. You might even put this in your notes. This is a good verse. But there are also false prophets among the people, even as there will be false teachers among you, who will secretly bring in destructive heresies, even denying the Lord who bought them and bring on themselves swift destruction. You hear it? 
false prophets have no fruit. There is no fruit of their alleged belief. There is no doctrinal fruit. You don't see any evidence that they are tied into the God who has spoken in creation and in Jesus Christ and in the Word of God. 2 Timothy, and I'm giving you more scripture than I usually give. I don't laden my sermons with lots of cross-references. That's a Bible study. You can do that uh, at home. But I, uh, this is so critical that I want to give you some corollary passages today. 2 Timothy chapter 4, verses 3 to 4. Paul is writing to his son in ministry, Timothy. 2 Timothy chapter 4, verses 3 to 4. For the time will come, and I think we're living in that time, yes, yes. when they will not endure sound doctrine. Now they'll endure entertainment, but they won't endure sound doctrine. But according to their own desires, because they have itching ears, they will heap up for themselves teachers. They will turn their ears away from the truth and be turned aside to fables. Hey, Pastor, how will we know the authentic from the pseudo? Glad you asked. How do I know a false prophet from a real prophet? By their fruit. And part of that fruit is doctrinal. Part of that fruit is proclamatory. What, what are they saying? Give you one more. Parallel passage. I read this, reread this, the passage I've known as many of you have for years, but I read this passage with great freshness this week as I connected it with Matthew 7. 1 John chapter 4, verses 1 to 3. Some people have paraphrased this and said, the Bible says, try the Spirit, buy the Spirit. It doesn't quite say that, but this is, this is what it says. This is where they get that paraphrase from. Beloved, do not believe every spirit, but test the spirits, whether they are of God, because many false prophets have gone out into the world. I might add, and have gone on television, yes. and have gone on radio. Yes. By this, you will know the spirit of God. Every spirit that confesses that Jesus Christ has come in the flesh is of God. And every spirit that does not confess that Jesus Christ has come in the flesh is not of God. And this is the spirit of the Antichrist, which you've heard was coming and is now already in the world. You hear it? Pastor, how will we know the authentic prophet from the false prophet spoken of here in verse 15 of Matthew chapter 7. You know the false prophet from the true by their fruits. Let me give you a second way to know them, which is not directly in the text, but is from the larger context of scripture. The second way you'll know the pseudo from the false is by spirit-given discernment. By spirit-given discernment. When you're watching television or listening to Christian radio, ask the Spirit of God to help you to discern between the true and the false. In fact, discernment is one of the spiritual gifts. Yes. Yes. Check what's being said. How does it square with Scripture? The more and more you study the Bible, the more and more you'll be able to tell the false from the true. You say, that doesn't line up. Amen. That is wacky. What are you talking about? Have you ever actually spoken out loud to the television? I have. <laughs> that is a bunch of nonsense I've said out loud. What are you talking about on radio? What are you, what are you talking about? That's a bunch of... I've actually said. That's a bunch of crap. I've actually said. Yes, I have. I may have told you the story. I'll tell it again because it's 
apropos here. Wonderful story of a young man who wanted to learn to cut jade. I like jade. I just think it's very a very beautiful stone. I wear a jade ring. In fact, I bought it a jade shop where a man cut his own jade in uh, just outside Anchorage, Alaska. This young man wanted to learn to cut jade, so he went to this master stone cutter and said, uh, I'd, I'd like to learn to cut jade. I'd like to make jewelry. I wonder if you'd teach me. The old man said, you, you wouldn't want to work with me. I'll tell you right now. No. No, no, I, I do. I, I want to learn to cut jade. The old man said, well, you probably don't, at least not with me. Because if you work with me, you have to do everything I tell you to do without ever questioning me. He said, oh, okay. That's it. All right, I want to cut Jake. And the old man said, I'll be here tomorrow at 8.45. Not a minute before, not a minute after. On time. 8.45 the next day, the young man was there. He said, are we going to cut Jake today? The old man said, well, I am going to cut Jake. You. <laughs> I'm going to take this piece of Jake and sit in the corner. Man. So he sat in the corner for eight hours. Just watching the old man holding a piece of jade. Came back the next day. He said, We're gonna cut jade today. He said, I am gonna cut jade. Said the old man, you will take this piece of jade and sit in the corner and watch me. He did that for eight hours. For 92 days. The young man came in about the third day. He said, I know the drill. Give me the jade. <laughs> <laughs> On the 93rd morning, the young man came in at 845. He said, yeah, yeah, I know. Give me the jade. The old man put a rock in his hand. The young man said, that's not jade. He said, now you're ready to cut. Uh, I want you to hold this word so often. Read it so much that you know when you're not holding it. You know the false from the true because it doesn't ring right in my spirit. I, I have held Jade long enough to know that the rock you just gave me is not Jade. I know the authentic because I sat with it yes. for months at a time. Yes. So I know when you gave me something false. Yes. I want you to get this word in your heart. Yes. I want you to get this word in your spirit. And then nobody can trick you. Yes. No charlatan on the air can talk you out of your faith and out of sound doctrine. Because you've held it long enough to know Amen. when yes. you're being sold a weird bill of goods. Yes. You know the false from the true by their fruits. Right in the text. Yes. Verses 16 to 20. And you know the false from the true by spirit-given discernment. Our neighbor, just a mile down Panola Road, Dr. Kerwin B. Lee, told me that he named the church that he founded, the Berean Christian Church, because of what was said of the believers in the city of Berea, in the book of Acts. Do you remember that passage? It's a wonderful passage. If you don't know uh, the story of what was said about the Bereans, let me just remind you of it. It's in Acts 17.10. 17.10. I'll simply read it and I'll slow down uh, where the compliment is paid to these Bere the Bereans. 17.10 of Acts. Then the brethren immediately sent Paul and Silas away by night to Berea. When they arrived, they went into the synagogue of the Jews. These, that is the Bereans, were more fair-minded than those in Thessalonica. Here's, here's the part of the text I want you to get. In that they received the word with all readiness and searched the scriptures daily to find out whether these things were so. They wanted to check the preachers. They wanted to tell the false from the true. 
the pseudo from the authentic. How do you do that? You, you hold the jade yes. so tightly and so often that you know when you're not hearing it. And these Bereans were people of the word. They searched the scriptures how often? Daily. To see whether what they were hearing lines up with the word of God. My prayer for you, beloved, is that that might happen to us. In fact, my prayer for you is the same prayer that Paul prayed for the church at Philippi in Philippians 1, verses 9 to 11. Paul prays this for the Philippians. And this I pray, I pray this for crossroads, that your love may abound still more and more in knowledge and all discernment that you may approve the things that are excellent, and that you being sincere and without offense till the day of Christ, being filled with the fruits of righteousness, which are by Jesus Christ, to the glory and praise of God. I told you a tale of two trees, one heavy laden with good fruit, the other does not bear good fruit, but is full of deceit. And the only way we'll know the difference is that God will make us fruit inspectors that have held Jane. Let us pray. Oh God, we have heard your warning. We profess that sometimes we are more interested in being entertained than informed. We repent of such a sick desire. And pray that you would give us such a hunger and thirst for truth and righteousness that we will immerse ourselves in your word. We pray for the new believers, for those who are young in their faith, and pray that the false teachers would not have their attention. I pray that you'd let them down by your spirit into the deepest wells of teaching and preaching and study, that they may know you sure enough, and may know and love your word, and search the scriptures daily to see whether I'm telling the truth and the other teachers to which they give their attention are telling the truth. May we align ourselves with your will revealed in your word. Deliver us, we pray, from the pseudo-prophetes. May they not get any, get any of our resources, May they get none of our attention. <clears throat> Fill us, we pray, with sound doctrine that we may love your word and love your appearing and be faithful to you till death. After which we again shall be in your presence. This time never to leave, to bask in the sunlight of your glory. We praise you. Now for the one, the ones that may be apart from you this day, we pray. 
are the ones who've heard just enough teaching to make them dangerous, but have not really understood what you have come to do in Jesus. I pray that more and more light comes their way, and that they get it. That your love in Jesus Christ will be received by them. That sin will be repented of. That your son might be embraced as only Lord and Master and Savior. Oh God, may our hands be tightly wrapped around your authentic word. like a beginning stone cutter with his hand wrapped around jade. Grant that it may be so, O sovereign Lord. While every head is bowed, just before we end this time of prayer, sir, madam, you may be here today and say, Pastor Farmer, I, I finally connected the dots. I have been listening to way out there proclaimers. I think they're false prophets according to this text and I need to come to the true God who has revealed himself in Jesus Christ. Pastor Farmer, I'd like to chat with someone about how I may begin this new life marked by spirit-given discernment. This is my day. Today I want to give my life to Jesus Christ. That describes you. The moment we start singing this closing game, God be with you till we meet again, would you please come down this aisle and meet me? And I'll assign you to a person who will speak with you briefly today about this new life. Thank you, God, for speaking to us so clearly. Jesus, the way, the truth, and the life. May we be fruit-bearing trees in your kingdom. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit, we pray. Amen. Amen. Also, if you're here today and you'd say, Master Palmer, I'm a believer, but I would like to explore what it means to unite with this church officially. You come forward as we start singing. I'd be happy to receive you as well. If you're able, would you please stand?
had a dream that just compelled me to come to church today. I'm going to ask Elder Dawn Swaby Ellis, would you please come uh, now and come meet our sister and spend some time with her? I want to include you in the closing prayer, and then uh, this is Dawn Ellis. Yes. She'll talk with you in just a moment. Let us pray, and then the moment you hear the phrase, and now, my brothers and sisters, would you please at that moment open your eyes, if you're praying with the eyes closed, and receive the benediction. Great God, you have spoken to us, and we thank you. We pray for our sister Muna that what has been said will resonate with her spirit, that she'll get it, that she'll understand the things you are saying to her, perhaps in a dream, we thank you for the opportunity to feed into her life, to speak into her life. Pray that you would be heard this day. We praise you for the way you address us and arrest us through your word, through song, through silence, through our fellowship. How we praise you that we're better off when we leave this place. Now continue to speak, Lord. We pray that we would ever hear you and respond to you. Now, my brothers and sisters, go from this place. And may the Lord bless you and keep you. And cause his face to shine upon you and be gracious to you. The Lord make your week a great week, not because you're a great person, but because you serve a great God. Amen. May this be a week that is full of opportunities to bear his name yes. and to witness to his love and to serve his purposes. Yes. Go in the strong name of Jesus and may you know the false from the true. Yes. Not because you're clever, but because God is speaking and pouring truth into your life and into your spirit by his word. Go. And may you not ever be the same as you were when you came in here. Because God has been with us and has spoken to us. God be with you, beloved. Till we meet again. Amen. Amen. Amen.